Positive liberty is the possession of the capacity to act upon one's free will, as opposed to negative liberty, which is freedom from external restraint on one's actions. A concept of positive liberty may also include freedom from internal constraints. The concepts of structure and agency are central to the concept of positive liberty because, in order to be free, a person should be free from inhibitions of the social structure in carrying out their free will. Structurally, classism, sexism, ageism, ableism, and racism can inhibit a person's freedom. As positive liberty is primarily concerned with the possession of sociological agency, it is enhanced by the ability of citizens to participate in government and have their voices, interests, and concerns recognized and acted upon. Although Isaiah Berlin's essay, Two Concepts of Liberty, 1958, is typically acknowledged as the first to explicitly draw the distinction between positive and negative liberty. Frankfurt School psychoanalyst and Marxist humanistic philosopher Eric Frum drew a similar distinction between negative and positive freedom in *The Fear of Freedom*, 1941, predating Berlin's essay by more than a decade. Topic overview. The word liberty can refer to many things, but Isaiah Berlin recognized two main types of liberty. Berlin described a statement such as, I am slave to no man, as one of negative liberty, that is, freedom from another individual's direct interference. He contrasted this with a positive freedom statement such as, I am my own master, which lays claim to a freedom to choose one's own pursuits in life. Charles Taylor sees negative freedom as an opportunity concept. One possesses negative freedom if one is not enslaved by external forces, and has equal access to a society's resources regardless of how one decides to spend their time. Positive freedom, says Taylor, is an exercise concept. Possessing it might mean that one is not internally constrained, one must be able to act according to their highest self, according to reason. Suppose a rich and powerful actor is also a drug addict. This actor may possess a great deal of negative liberty, but very little positive liberty according to Taylor. By Taylor's definitions, positive freedom entails being in a mature state of decision-making, free of internal or external restraints e.g. weakness, fear, ignorance, etc. History Jean-Jacques Rousseau's theory of freedom, according to which individual freedom is achieved through participation in the process whereby one's community exercises collective control over its own affairs in accordance with the general will. Some interpret the social contract to suggest that Rousseau believed that liberty was the power of individual citizens to act in the government to bring about changes, this is essentially the power for self-governance and democracy. Rousseau himself said, the mere impulse to appetite is slavery, while obedience to law we prescribe ourselves as liberty." For Rousseau, the passage from the state of nature to the civil state substitutes justice for instinct gives his actions the morality they had formerly lacked. G. F. W. Hegel wrote in his Elements of the Philosophy of Right in the part in which he introduced the concept of the sphere of abstract right that, "...duty is not a restriction on freedom, but only on freedom in the abstract." and that duty is the attainment of our essence, the winning of positive freedom. Examples <inaudible> 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 In a description of positive liberty from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Put in the simplest terms, one might say that a democratic society is a free society because it is a self-determined society, and that a member of that society is free to the extent that he or she participates in its democratic process. But there are also individualist applications of the concept of positive freedom. For example, it is sometimes said that a government should aim actively to create the conditions necessary for individuals to be self-sufficient or to achieve self-realization. In Recovering the social contract. Ron Replogel made a metaphor that is helpful in understanding positive liberty. Surely, it is no assault on my dignity as a person if you take my car keys, against my will, when I have had too much to drink. There is nothing paradoxical about making an agreement beforehand providing for paternalistic supervision in circumstances when our competence is open to doubt. In this sense, positive liberty is the adherence to a set of rules agreed upon by all parties involved. Should the rules be altered, all parties involved must agree upon the changes. 
Therefore, positive liberty is a contractarian philosophy, however, Isaiah Berlin opposed any suggestion that paternalism and positive liberty could be equivalent. He stated that positive liberty could only apply when the withdrawal of liberty from an individual was in pursuit of a choice that individual himself, herself made, not a general principle of society or any other person's opinion. In the case where a person removes a driver's car keys against their will because they have had too much to drink, this constitutes positive freedom only if the driver has made, of their own free will, an earlier decision not to drive drunk. Thus, by removing the keys, the other person facilitates this decision and ensures that it will be upheld in the face of paradoxical behavior i.e., drinking, by the driver. For the remover to remove the keys in the absence of such an expressed intent by the driver, because the remover feels that the driver ought not to drive drunk, is paternalism, and not positive freedom by Berlin's definition. Eric Frum sees the distinction between the two types of freedom emerging alongside humanity's evolution away from the instinctual activity that characterizes lower animal forms. This aspect of freedom, he argues, is here used not in its positive sense of freedom to, but in its negative sense of freedom from, namely freedom from instinctual determination of his actions. For from, freedom from animal instinct implicitly implies that survival now hinges on the necessity of charting one's own course. He relates this distinction to the biblical story of man's expulsion from Eden. Acting against God's orders means freeing himself from coercion, emerging from the unconscious existence of prehuman life to the level of man. Acting against the command of authority, committing a sin, is in its positive human aspect the first act of freedom. He is free from the bondage of paradise, but he is not free to govern himself, to realize his individuality. Positive freedom, from maintains, comes through the actualization of individuality in balance with the separation from the whole, a solidarity with all men, united not by instinctual or predetermined ties, but on the basis of a freedom founded on reason. See also Mutual liberty Negative and positive rights Real freedom Rule according to higher law The Trap TV documentary series Topic. References Topic. Further reading Mackin, Tiber 2008. Positive Liberty. In Hamoe, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 383-85. Doi 10.4135/9781412965.2009 236 ISBN 9781412965804 LCCN 2008951 OCLC 750831024 Nicholas Dent, Rousseau, Routledge, 2005. 